Hello, good morning from Lahore. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kroker, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And continuing with the thanatology, this is the fifth lecture in continuation. We are discussing hypostasis. And the learning objective of this lecture will be that we learn in this lecture the internal appearance of hypostasis. In the previous lecture, we discussed about the hypostasis, which is visible externally on the skin on the dependent region. Now we'll discuss the internal appearance of hypostasis and the factors which can modify the postmortem lividity. Then the time of appearance and fixation. We'll look and overview when it is appeared and how it is fixed. Then what is the medical legal significance? and its differential diagnosis. That is the conditions which simulate with the uh, postmortem staining, they have to be differentiated. Like lividity and cyanosis, lividity and congestion, and lividity and bruise. Then we will discuss the graphic representation of hypostasis. How we plot a graph in reference to hypostasis. So, Continuing with the today's topic, the internal appearance of hypostasis. The site of distribution of hypostasis on the viscera, it also depends upon the position of the body because the blood will gravitate to the dependent regions of the viscera and the position in which the body is lying, the viscera which is dependent surface, that will be showing the hypostasis. Normally when the person is in supine position, the hypostasis will be seen on the areas which are dependent. That is the back of the uh, cerebrum, cerebellum, dorsal portions of the lungs, posterior surface of the stomach, dorsal portion or posterior surface of the liver, kidneys, and lowermost coils of the in intestine, which is dependent. It is important to differentiate between lividity from other congestive conditions which are produced before death. This, this is important. And for example, in case of lungs, this hypostasis may not be mistaken for inflammatory congestion of the pneumonia because that will be involving the whole surface, whereas the hypostasis is limited to the dependent region only. And the hypostasis of the stomach should not be regarded as the irritant poison because irritant poison, if is there, it will be involving the whole surface, not only the dependent surface, which is the hypostasis. Whereas if there is any confusion, the histology can settle the issue. This is the diagram or picture of the lungs showing the posterior surface where the hypostasis is present. Now the factor affecting the postmortem lividity the postmortem lividity, as we know, is a postmortem phenomena. And the hemoglobin, when it, it is reduced after the death, because there is no oxygenation, no pumping of the blood. And because of the fluidity of the blood, for initial few hours, it is in fluid form and it flows to the dependent regions. Then the effect of gravity is there. That the dependent region will be showing the flowing of the blood to that region because of the effect of the gravity. So the, this is to be uh, remembered that this is a postmortem phenomena and because of the blood which is in fluid form initially, that the blood will flow to the dependent region and because of the effect of gravity, it will be limited to the areas which are dependent. Then the color will be depending upon the cause of death and the color of the skin, that means the fair colored skin, it will, can easily be manifested and in dark colored skin, it is uh, manifested with difficulty. Then the antemortem state of the body and the mode of death also determine the color of the uh, postmortem staining. Then the position of the body and the pressure on the specific areas on those areas which are under the pressure of the tight uh, garments or protruding object, the hypostasis will not be there. So these are the factors which can modify and alter the uh, appearance of the postmortem lividity. 
like in carbon monoxide poisoning it is bright cherry red colored in acute cyanide uh, cyanide poisoning it is bright pink in color but later it fades away similarly in potassium uh, chlorate poisoning it is uh, chocolate uh, brown color and due to formation of met hemoglobin and if death is due to cold it is again bright pink color uh, the difference between uh, carbon monoxide and this is that in uh, death due to cold because of the reduced temperature the temperature is very low and for metabolic process an optimal temperature is required and there will not be metabolic process going on in extreme hypothermia so oxygen will be there it will be dissolved in the uh, blood but it will it cannot participate in the metabolic process because the metabolic process is not going on because of hypothermia so the blood will be in bright pink color in hemorrhage like anemia and anemia uh, the post mortem staining is very faint uh, because of hemorrhage there is loss of blood and because of anemia the color is uh, a bit uh, pale so faint color will be visible in asphyxia the dark pulpur because of deoxygenated blood it will be appearing dark color so these are various conditions in various poisons that the color of the hypostasis can be changed now the time of post mortem staining lividity and fixation uh, overall view of the progression that in initial 20 to 30 minutes after death it appears as small mottled patches on the dependent areas and in 2 to 3 hours they coalesce together to become broader patches and in 6 to 8 hours it completes and then it is fixed in 8 to 12 hours this is its uh, progression then test for uh, fixation that you just press with the thumb of your uh, hand if it is uh, area is bleached that means hypostasis is not fixed and if it doesn't bleach that means it is fixed so this is the graphic representation uh, you can see that initial 6 to 8 hours it is progressing and then it is fixed and when after 24 hours the putrefaction starts then it will be degraded degradation will be seen it will be lost so this this is the graphic representation of post mortem lividity the medical legal importance it tells us about the position of the body at the time of death because the post mortem staining will be developing on the dependent region so initial position and the later on whether it is changed or not it all gives information about the time of death and after fixation if the position is changed then the color suggests certain causes of death like uh, i have discussed various colors in various poison similarly various hypostasis color can be because of disease process and the poisoning they can also tell us the cause of death similarly it helps us in estimation time of time since death because we know that in so much time it is appeared and in this much time it is fixed so we can uh, estimate the time since death from the progression of the post mortem staining then lividity and the bruise differential diagnosis these are various condition which simulates that the cyanosis bruise and congestion they are the condition which comes in the differential diagnosis and should be differentiated as differential diagnosis so the it uh, position of the body at the time of death it shows the position in which the body remained after death so we can have an idea about the manner like hanging or drowning when the position of the body is changed before the pattern of lividity is established the fresh area of lividity will repel on the new dependent areas but faint patches will be uh, present on the previous site and it will reappear on the next dependent site when the position of shapiro says when the position of the body is changed after distribution pattern of the blood in the dependent vessels has been fixed the pattern of lividity cannot be altered that when the post mortem staining has been fixed and if the position is changed it will not appear on the next dependent region it will be fixed 
The fixation of lividity is due to stagnation of blood in the distended toneless vessels and is only a relative term. Whenever a body is turned or its position is changed, some of it will have to fade out. Well-developed hypostasis, however, fades slowly. So that means this is just a relative term that it doesn't change its position. It does change, but very faintly, very faintly. So these things should be kept in mind. Therefore, if the body is found in a certain posture with the postmortem lividity distributed over a region of the body, which is not the most dependent now, which is the posture, then it can be assumed that the body has been moved after death when the postmortem staining is fixed. So about the cause of death, like in carbon monoxide, it is bright cherry red color when carboxyhemoglobin concentration is over 30%. In opium poisoning, it is black and extreme cold, is it, it is reddish pink. In potassium cyanide, it also chocolate pink. This is the carbon monoxide poisoning and this is the opium poisoning. Now about the differential diagnosis of postmortem lividity. That is a condition which simulates the postmortem lividity, they have to be differentiated. They are the cyanosis, bruise, and the congestion. Now, lividity and cyanosis. This is the cyanosis, the purplish or bluish nails. This is central cyanosis. Now, the differential diagnosis, lividity and cyanosis, time of onset. Postmortem lividity is postmortem, whereas cyanosis is antimortem phenomena. About the location, postmortem lividity is on the dependent parts, whereas cyanosis is on the terminal tips. The appearance, it's normal in the postmortem lividity in all types of death, whereas cyanosis is abnormal and pathological sign. The confirmation about the postmortem lividity, it is visible as postmortem phenomena, and in cyanosis is antimortem and observation or evidence of certain disease. Now the change of position, the postmortem lividity shift, shifting of lividity. If it is not fixed, and if it is fixed, then it will not shift. Whereas cyanosis has no uh, any relation with the change of the position. It will remain on the terminal tips. Then about the history of disease, which is not uh, required in the postmortem lividity, it's a normal phenomena, whereas in cyanosis, it is a positive uh, disease element or history of the disease is available. And the confirmation visible as postmortem phenomena and cyanosis is antimortem phenomena. Now, lividity and the bruise. The situation about the lividity is, is it is epidermal due to engulfed vessels as a postmortem effect. Whereas bruise is subepidermal due to ruptured blood vessels that is oozing out of blood. Blood has been extravasated out of vessels and organized into the tissues because of trauma. The cuticle is uninjured in postmortem lividity, but it may be injured in bruise. Similarly, the site, it is on the dependent regions in postmortem lividity, but bruise can be on any region, any site of trauma, on the front, on the side, whatever the site of impact is. The appearance of postmortem lividity is it is not raised above the level of skin. That is not no swelling, whereas bruised area, there might be swelling because of the accumulation of the blood and edema. The edges, they are clearly defined in postmortem lividity, but bruise, they merge with the surrounding and they can be showing variegation in the colors. The color is uniform in postmortem lividity, whereas the bruise, there is variegation in color that is the hemoglobin is, if the time has passed, the hemoglobin has broken down into various pigments and there is the variegation in color. On cut section, the postmortem lividity the blood will be oozing out of the vessels and it can easy be, easily be washed. Whereas the bruise on incision, 
the extravasated blood is seen, which is not washed easily. And it has been extravasated out of the vessels and organized into the tissue. And if you try to wash it, it will not be washed. So a simple test at autopsy, you can give an NC and you can decide that this is lividity or a bruise. Then the effect of pressure uh, not present in the uh, sites where the, they are under pressure, like the tight garments or protruding object, the bruise may be present under the pressure points. Blood elements on microscopy in postmortem lividity, the elements is seen in the blood vessel. They are not uh, outside the vessel and there is no evidence of inflammation. Where the bruise, the elements are seen outside the vessels and there is evidence of inflammation. This is the cut section when you give the incision and the postmortem lividity can easily be washed. The differences will be marked before the putrefaction starts. But when the putrefaction sets in, then it will not be differentiated. But the important thing is that the putrefaction starts relatively earlier at the places where there is bruise. So this is the postmortem lividity. And this is the picture of the bruise. It can be anywhere in, on the site of trauma. And you can be, see the variegation of colors. And this is also a bruise. This is showing the color changes. Now about the congestion, congestion lividity and congestion. The differential diagnosis of lividity and congestion that distribution in postmortem lividity irregular and on the dependent parts, whereas congestion involves the whole organ. Postmortem lividity only limited to the dependent region, where congestion involving the whole organ. Then appearance is normal in all deaths, whereas it is pathological for congestion. The mucous membrane uh, in postmortem lividity, it is dull and lusterless, whereas in congestion it is normal. Exudates, no inflammatory exudates in postmortem lividity, but in congestion, exudates are seen. In hollow viscerals like stomach, intestine, uh, when you stretch, you can see the stained and unstained areas because of lividity. But in congestion, the stomach and intestine show when you stretch them, they show a uniform distribution of congestion, not limited only to the dependent regions. So summary of this lecture is that we have learned about the uh, internal appearance of the hypostasis and the factors which modify the appearance of hypostasis or postmortem staining, then progression or time of appearance and the fixation. Then the medical legal significance, importance of hypostasis and differential diagnosis of lividity, that the conditions which simulate hypostasis, they have to be differentiated. Lividity and cyanosis, lividity and congestion, and lividity and bruise, they have to be differentiated. Then we have uh, discussed the graphic representation of the hypostasis. So thank you very much. This is all about the hypostasis. Take care. We will continue the thanatology in the next lecture. If you like my videos, Please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name, Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokhar. Thank you very much.